Hi, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to this month's Horror Talk. So, um, this is the, um, yeah, it's the third Horror Talk of, of this year. So, yeah, I thought, you know, let's forget about all that's going on in the outside world with this coronavirus uh, stuff. And let's, for, for the next while, you know, let's have a discussion like a retrospective talk on a horror franchise this one uh, this month it is the cloverfield franchise an anthology horror sci-fi series um that started way back in 2008 so let's go to where it began so it all started in 2008 with cloverfield um this film was directed by matt reeves and written by drew goddard and it starred uh, lizzie Kaplan, uh, Jessica Lucas, TJ Miller, uh, Michael Staff, David, um, Mike Vogel, and Obite Yas Yasman. Something I'm butchering that guy's name. So this came out on the 18th of January, 2008. Uh, the film focused. Uh, the film was in the style of found footage. So it was a found footage monster movie. So the film. You know, presented in found footage, it follows um, you know this um, guy um, with a camera called um, what does it say? Yeah, it focuses on this couple that are on their that are on getting on with their daily life in New York City. And they're also preparing like, well, they're also having a party, a send off party for a friend who's going, who's got a job in Japan for this slush corporation. Now, um, this film was, um, was it produced by J.J. Abrams? Because it was done by his company Bad Robot, wasn't it? So, um, yeah, he was a producer in the film. So with this being J.J. Abrams, you know, he likes to hide Easter eggs in his film works. Uh, he's done it not just in Cloverfield, but he's also done it in, um, you know, he's done it in um, the Star Trek films that he's directed. I think he's done it in the Star Wars films that he's also done. Uh, but yeah, um, this has, you know, this film has so many Easter eggs and subliminal messages in this, even references to classic monster movies. Uh, there's bits in the film where they quickly show images of classic giant monster movies, including them, the giant ant movie from the 50s. I can't remember what scene that briefly appears in, but it's a blink and you'll miss it moment. If you do a freeze frame, you will see these images. Uh, one I can tell you is when the helicopter, when they're flying over the monster in New York, when it jumps up and bites the helicopter uh, and it crashes in Central Park. As it crashes, it goes all stacking that. For a brief second, if you pause and freeze frame it, you'll see an image from King Kong in that film. Um, so in this film, we, the first, we it follows, you know, it doesn't follow soldiers or anything. The soldiers, the military, the army go attacking this giant monster and we don't know what it is. We get brief glimpses of it at first. And we also notice it drops these little parasites it's got on it as well. And, you know, they caused a lot of terror and horror around uh, New York. They even take, uh, uh, we even follow them through the subway system in New York and notice something's not right there with the rats. And they notice that these creatures from the bigger creature are lurking around. But yeah, one by one, these people get picked off or they die. And yeah, when I watched this, I will admit I did find it quite, you know, quite unsettling. You know, I mean, I was just getting into horror at that time in 2008. I mean, I'd watched my fair shares of Scooby Doo and uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? But you know, I was getting into the horror stuff. I'd seen the Blair Witch Project, so I knew that this was in the. I was told this was in the same quality as the Blair Witch Project, presented in found footage, um, and the found footage films. At the time, I don't think this was a big one. Uh, well, I mean, now the found footage genre is, you know, the subgenre in horror 
is being done to death now. I mean, there's loads of films that have found footage elements in there uh, to make it look like it's real, but Cloverfield at this time, in 2008, you know, only a handful of films had been made in found footage, like The Blair Witch Project and, um, you know, and Cannibal Holocaust. So, you know, not a lot of them were, you know, so found footage was still a pretty much a unique way of making films. Me, I personally love found footage films because it shows you that you don't need a good quality camera to make a film. I could make a film, a found footage film, this camera video in this horror talk on with. Um, but yeah, I'm just saying, I, I like, you, you either like found footage horror films or you don't. I personally like them. Uh, what else uh, could I say? So yeah, I liked, you know, the effects in this too. They had good effects. No, not a lot. No, no they were very pra very practical ones. A lot of it was CGI. Although you could tell it was CGI, I still thought the effects were good. Especially the scene where the Statue of Liberty's head is thrown across the city. Thinking, Jesus, someone's ripped the head off the Statue of Liberty. And that is the tagline on the poster, something has found us. Um, yeah, so watching these people get through New York and we assume that they're dead at the end because they take refuge under a bridge in Central Park and then they drop a bomb on this monster. We do however get to see a good look at this monster at the end, you know, we see it in all its evilness and hideousness and it is a giant creature that is just, you know, it's just, I thought it was, you know, I mean I'd be shitting myself with a giant monster if I was face to face with a giant monster being a puny little human. Anyway, um, you know, as the film ends, we do get a quick clip of of the couple that we first see at the end, a couple weeks before the events of the film, at a fun fair, having uh, fun. Uh, now, in the background, if you look very carefully, you'll see something fall into the sea. I don't know, you know, it's like a spaceship. What is it? I'm not 100% sure, and I don't think this actually came about until like later on in the series i'm like what is that you know i mean i don't personally it's hard to see the first time round. even i had difficulty trying to see it uh but i've seen freeze frame videos and people doing zoom ins and what have you so yeah could be the monster or an egg from the monster i don't know we don't know for sure yet Cloverfield. So, yeah, I like this one. Um, it's I saw this with some friends at school when I was when this film came out. So, um, yeah, thinking of this as just a standalone film, nothing else. Uh, we do, however, get a follow-up. Now, when they said this film's going to be uh, called Cloverfield, I thought, oh, is this a sequel? Um, so, in this, the second instalment came in 2016 called 10 Cloverfield Lane, uh, which was the second instalment. It was directed by Dan, uh, I'm going to butcher this guy's name now, Dan Fratchenberg, and it was still produced by J.J. Abrams, uh, written by Josh Campbell and Matt Sutkin or something. Uh, starring John Goodman, Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Gallagher Jr. Uh, this one, 10 Cloverfield Lane, uh, focuses on a woman named Michelle who's uh, running away from this relationship, you know, breaking up with her boyfriend and we hear him like on the phone make a voice message and for those who may or may not know, that, the boyfriend, Ben, was actually voiced by Bradley Cooper. That's right, you know, Rocket Raccoon, hang, uh, you know, from Guardians of the Galaxy, Hangover. 
Yeah, that was a vocal cameo from him in that film, which I didn't notice at first until I saw a video of things you may have missed in it. Um, so yeah, then Michelle crashes her car, and then she wakes up in this bunker uh, in the company of this man named Howard, played by John Goodman, and another guy called Emmett, who are living in this bunker and surviving, because Howard tells her that the air outside is radiated and is lethal um, and you know Howard he'd been preparing for this for a long time and was safe and was and felt safe within the bunker he had food he had DVDs he had a TV he had a jukebox basically you know it was a perfect survival thing and we don't know what was going on outside um, it was theorized that this is, you know, but this I would say is set in the Cloverfield universe, the same universe as Cloverfield, you know, in a different part of the world, because this focuses on a bunker in a farm uh, where Howard lives. Um, anyway, in the film, they have air ventilation problems, and Michelle is the only one small enough to get through the air vent system, and she finds this other part of the bunker, finds a message written on the, on the door saying, help me. Then made us think, okay, what's really going on? And then they start to question Howard. They started to secretly find a way to escape. And when Howard finds out, you know, Emmett takes the blame. And Howard kills him. Which, I will admit, I did not see coming. I did not think he was going to shoot him, but he did. And then dissolve his body in acid. Um, so, yeah. Basically, Howard turned out to be a predator by the sound of it, and a sociopath. And he had, you know, Michelle in his, in his capture. Uh, but eventually, Michelle does escape. She does put up a fight, and Howard does suffer. And uh, he, well, he does get killed in the end. She escapes, and the bunker blows up. And she finds out that, you know, when she takes the bio biohazard suit that she made... Uh, out of a shower curtain and some other things. Um, turns out she uh, didn't need it because the air wasn't toxic or anything. But there still was something out there. Turns out there were aliens. Uh, but yeah, she was like the only survivor from the farm, which I'm going to assume is called 10 Cloverfield Lane, given the name of the movie. And another thing it has in common with the previous film it is got the word Cloverfield in it. So Michelle escapes and gets away and, you know, we know that there's aliens out there. So something's clearly going on. So where do these aliens come from? What is going on? Well, in the, um, you know, we do get a third movie. Um... A third film called The Cloverfield Paradox from 2018. So two years later, ten years after the original Cloverfield. So this one, The Cloverfield Paradox, is a science fiction horror um, that is directed by Julius Omphi Omf or something. And still produced by J.J. Abrams. And is the story is by Oren Uzel and... Doug Jung, and this one it stars Daniel Bruhai. Um, yeah, Daniel Bruhai, who's quite a well-known actor, Spanish-German actor. Uh, Elizabeth Baddicki or something. Asksel Henna, uh, Gugu. Mabethra or something Chris O'Dowell who I know from other things than this film uh, John Oz Oritz David Olewo or something and Zhang Zai or something so this premiered on Netflix yeah this was straight to Netflix um, you know distributed by Netflix and you know uh, this was this was released on Netflix on the 4th of February um, 2018 and in this it's the Cloverfield Paradox where we find some astronauts in space that are talking with Earth down below. The year is 2028 so 8 years from now but at the time 10 years from there. 
So it's 2028 and they're on a space station and they fire some big laser and they find themselves somewhere they find themselves in some parallel dimension because they don't know where Earth is after they were in Earth's orbit. Strange, bizarre things start occurring and yeah, we don't know what's going on. Eventually the crew slowly lose their sanity and get picked off one by one. Chris O'Dowd's arm goes AWOL all over the place after he gets it cut off and it's moving around. But eventually the crew believe they make it back to their Earth. They get out of that parallel one, that parallel universe, and they go back down to Earth. And as they do, we get a brief look at the giant monster from the original Cloverfield. And the monster, I believe, is called Clover. He's been given that name, Clover. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, but in this one, we also get a few... I think it does tie a few loose ends. We do get some Earth uh, drama on Earth where some giant monsters are coming out of nowhere because they cause some rupture in like, an alternate universe. So basically, do the aliens, the giant monsters and what have you that we see from the first two films... Do they come from this Cloverfield paradox that's been caused? If so, how is it affecting them in the year 20... How is it affecting them from the year 2028 and 2008? Clearly, they build a machine which does cause some kind of paradox. And yeah, they they screw up and you know, it gets messed up big time. Again, with the other two movies, we do get spe uh, Easter eggs and subliminal messages... And cameos. Um, so yeah, this uh, third film, The Cloverfield Paradox, completely flopped. Uh, but from what I've seen on my phone, the Cloverfield franchise isn't over yet because uh, I'm. Yeah, I'm looking. Cloverfield franchise. It says that Cloverfield is a science fiction horror anthology film series. Um, and it's created and produced by J.J. Abrams. Um, so yeah, all these films are ran from 2008 to the present. So up to now, there's been no... I've heard, I've looked, and there seems to be no word of a upcoming Cloverfield film. I think they were going to do a fourth one, but due to the events of... Due to the outcome of the Cloverfield Paradox... Um, they, you know, I don't believe they've made one. They did, however, in 2018, uh, reportedly say that the war horror film Overlord, uh, which is a, a science fiction war horror, uh, you know, that was reported to have been a fourth instalment uh, during its production. Uh, so, but uh, but that uh, you know, Abrams further described the film as true and decided theatrical release sequel to the first film. Okay, so is Overlord a? It doesn't really say it's in the Cloverfield universe, but. That's a completely different film in itself. So, yeah, Cloverfield series. So, the first one we focused on a giant monster and its parasites in New York. The second film, you know, kind of focused on the human monster. You know, because in, um, in 10 Cloverfield Lane, um, one of the taglines is, Monsters come in many forms. And that is quite right, and there's nothing more terrifying than the human monster. You know, an actual human being doing evil and vile things. Howard in that was the monster, you know, and, you know, it just goes to show, you know. In the 60s, they kind of went like that with, like, the human being a monster, the human antagonist, you know, like with Psycho and, you know, and slasher films. You know, before they were done to death. Um, the second one was all more sci-fi than it were horror, but still, I thought the Cloverfield Paradox was okay. 
I just didn't really think much of it. In fact, I, I it's it's definitely the least my least favourite in this series. So, um, you know my, you know, the rankings for this I would put the Cloverfield Paradox at number three, Cloverfield at number two, and Ten Cloverfield Lane at number one. Why Ten Cloverfield Lane at number one? Despite the ending bit being science fictiony and what have you. You know, a person could literally have a bunker and could imprison you down there. And there are people out there like that that do imprison people and do terrible things to them. You know, that's something that can actually happen. So, you know, like it says, monsters come in many shapes and forms. And people like, there's people out there like Howard that probably don't have a, a nuclear war bunker, but they probably still do imprison people and do horrible things. So, and I do find that more unsettling than a CGI giant monster roaming around New York or aliens. You know, 10 Cloverfield Lane definitely put a real factor on, uh, you know, on the human condition. How humans can change their, how humans behave and everything and, and do terrible stuff. Um... But yeah, I do love, um, I do like the first Cloverfield film as well for its found footage stuff and the monster. Um, and that monster, Clover, did make a cameo at the end of the Cloverfield Paradox coming out of the clouds when their space pod was coming down to Earth as it went into the clouds. Clover's head came out of the clouds. So I'm thinking, okay, it's he it's, it looks bigger. So what, has this monster grown bigger? Or is it a completely different monster? Is it not the monster from Cloverfield? We don't know. We haven't had an answer yet, and we haven't had another instalment in the Cloverfield franchise. Who knows how long it could be before the next one? It could be another eight years. Could be another ten years. We don't know. You know, but all I know is that there's, you know, we haven't had a Cloverfield film, you know, in you know yet. But who knows? Who knows? They might do another one. They might not. But they, you know, it hasn't, they haven't, you know, they, it says the franchise has run from 2008 to the present. So there's no end on it yet. So you never know. Anyway, yeah, uh, I think that's it for this month's horror talk. Uh, let me know what you think to this film series down in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? How would you rank these? Which is your favourite? Which is your least favourite? You know, did I bring anything to your attention about things you might not have known such as the easter eggs or subliminal messages let me know all that down in the comments below and if you like this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up share with your friends please subscribe to my channel if you're new here and you know, and you want to see more from me uh, i upload main videos every friday and horror movie reviews in between so yeah that's it for this one so i've been random russ this has been horror talk the Cloverfield franchise. So, yeah. Um, until next time, don't have nightmares. <laughs>